Welcome to this lecture on differentiated instruction. During this lecture, we'll be exploring the differentiation by learning environment. Remember, it's best to think about differentiated instruction from a perspective of four pillars. Learning environment, content, process, and product. By using this framework, it will help you be much more systematic in your approach to differentiated instruction in the classroom. For our discussion today, we're going to be focusing on learning environment. Learning environment really is the context in which all the other differentiation approaches are going to occur. We want to make sure that the learning environment is supportive of these various kinds of approaches. More than ever, classrooms are in competition of what's going on on the outside. Um, and the traditional approaches to instruction you know, are really not as effective as maybe they once were. And so part of this has to be really describing and creating a foundation um, to really support the approach for differentiated instruction. And that's what we're talking about in terms of looking at differentiated um, instruction by and learning environment. from the science of learning that brains will shut down to repeated stimulus. And we know that classroom teachers are in, in direct competition with you know, exciting kind of alternatives such as is, uh, you know, video games and uh, things like that. So um, we have to look at constantly how do we sort of change up instruction within the classroom so that we're achieving our aims, which is improved student learning. Two aspects to engagement that we want to look at in terms of how environments can support this is first, what gets our attention, and then what sustains our attention. So we look at kind of a list here of things that can activate attention, things that can be useful in terms of, of making sure that our students are orienting towards the, the main instruction. But it's important to note that this will not sustain the attention. This will get the initial attention, but won't sustain it. So let's look at some factors that are related to sustaining attention, which ultimately sustains engagement. So once we get attention, let's talk about how we can keep that attention. One of the first things that we know is that student choice is really critical. So if we can afford students some choice in their learning environment, giving them some control, we know that they're going to be much more engaged in that process, much more active members as opposed to passive recipients. The other, another step is, is relevance. We want to make sure that the kind of learning that we want to occur has connection to the student's life. We know that if that's the case, then it had, we have the chance of having much deeper kinds of learning. Feedback is going to be critical. Students want to know how they're performing, and we need to look at you know, how do we provide feedback. Is it immediate? Um, does it recognize the positive aspects of the, of the performance? Does it identify um, steps where we can improve and give concrete steps on how to do that? And finally, having a, a warm, nurturing environment where students feel really safe and engaged on a social level. Um, though, those are, are, are factors that will help increase attention. So as you review the materials, start to assess your classroom. Look at how do I offer choice, relevance, directed feedback, and maintain engagement with my students.